Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of my introductory series on design and CAD. In this series we're using the in-context, parametric and solid modelling features of Fusion 360 to design an electronics enclosure. In the previous episode we continued using some simple features and dimensioning skills in order to create the base of the enclosure. In this episode we'll look at using some slightly more advanced features to design a volume knob. So picking up where we left off with Fusion 360, we've got currently three components and of course we're going to need a new one for our volume dial. So create a new component and we're going to call it volume dial. So as promised, this is a slightly more complicated method, not because it needs to be for this particular application, but it just lets us have a look at a few more features that Fusion 360 offers so that when you do have something that's more complicated, you have a more broad scope of ways to do it. To do this, we don't need the enclosure and we don't need the base. So let's turn those off so we don't get distracted by those elements. We have the headphone amp and the volume dial components. So the basis of what we're going to do here is a revolve. So to get started with our model, we go into the construct menu where we can create some reference geometry and we need point at center of circle. So we'll create that and find any circle, any one of these will be fine. Any of the ones from the potentiometer, obviously where the volume knob attaches is fine. So we'll select there and that puts us right there. Then we need to go back to the construction menu and now we need a plane, an offset plane. And we're going to offset it from the X, Y and the distance. It doesn't look like you can put in a point here, but in fact you can. If you just select the point, it snaps directly to that distance. So now we have a plane that's exactly offset to the center of the potentiometer. Now with that plane selected, start a new sketch. So what we're looking to do here is create a profile of the volume knob. If you imagine cutting it in half and then cutting it in half again, so you've got just one quarter, looking at one of those faces. That's a two dimensional face that you can revolve in 360 degrees to create a solid round object. Now, the best way to start, I think, is going to be to project some geometry. So that gives us obviously the width of the dial and the contact face for the distance, the amount that you're going to be pushing this knob on. From there, let's create a thickness of the knob and just dial it out all the way back and up into here. These obviously we want to connect up. Uh, this we've got to be a little bit careful of. So if we show our enclosure, The outer enclosure that gives you an idea of how far back the volume dial can go we can actually dimension directly to that line and we'll say we'll have an offset of three quarters of a mil we also need to be able to dimension to the edge of this so we'll project that just to make sure we have some clearance there of half a mil this can come all the way back and we'll put that at 9.5 mil in fact let's just leave it at nine because we don't want to get too close uh, we'll have an offset here, say 2 mil will be sufficient, and this, which is actually the radius of the knob. So if we keep that at 9, the radius will be 18, and that's going to be rather large. I think all we really need is a diameter of, say, 12 mil, I think should be sufficient. So 12 over 2, and that gives us that. So now we've got that basic profile, we need to do a revolve. To do the revolve, you first select the profile that you want to actually physically revolve. Then you select the axis you want it to revolve around. Now, as you can see, this point is beautifully placed right in the middle. So that revolves nicely around there. You can select to only go partial way, but we want to go all the way around one side and create a new body. So if we now hide our other solid parts, you can see we have this nice knob that should fit nicely on the end of the potentiometer. Yes, the only problem is that you have no indication of which direction is which. So let's create a sketch so we can add some geometry to make a basic indicator. Now you could have it stick it out, but I'm going to actually cut it inwards. So I'm just going to draw a line. This is going to be some construction geometry. 
then we'll form a little V shape just like this we'll make sure that these two lines are perpendicular and also equal then we'll set from here to here so the depth is to be one millimeter and then we'll do a cut extrude to remove all this material from the body just one side two objects two here make sure we have operation set to cut and click OK now the because the feature is quite small adding fillets is probably not very necessary especially if you're using a nozzle that's a 0.4 diameter so I don't think we need to do any more than that one last thing I want to do to the volume dial before we call it finished is add a chamfer we're going to add this just around the profile at the top and we're going to make that one mil that matches the cut of the indicator and I think that'll look quite nice so we started off by making our headphone amplifier the reference geometry it might have taken quite a long time to measure and assemble this whole model but after that it made the design process a whole lot quicker after doing that we used remember in context modeling so using that reference geometry to create the main body of the enclosure offsetting from the PCB to get the overall size requirements and the height requirements from the height of the components on the PCB and all that's defined by that original reference geometry if you want to go in and change the size of that PCB the whole size of the box will change if you change the height of the components again the box will change you move the components on the front of that reference assembly and the holes in the geometry will move because it's all linked back to that key reference geometry then we moved on to the base a fairly simple and boxy component but it has some quite nice features a couple of ways of using projections and extruding to certain faces with offsets and learning a little bit about countable holes so you can make your screws flush with a face and then we finished off with a volume dial some features of which are quite advanced like using construction geometry and offset planes and things like that the revolve feature can be quite difficult to get your head around to start with but once you know how to use it it can be a very powerful tool so that's it for episode four just to recap in the first episode we created our reference geometry from the electronics in episodes two and three we created the top and the bottom of the enclosure and in episode four we used some slightly more advanced features such as construction geometry and the revolve feature in order to create the volume knob in the next episode we're going to be exporting those files as stls so that we can move them into a slicer and then print them thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe follow me on twitter and instagram for behind the scenes and i'll see you in the next one